hello again. So, got a couple of uh, fixes for bugs in my previous video, so I figured it was worth doing another one. So one thing that uh, Shadow Mage fixed overnight when I pointed it out to him and he immediately fixed it, because he is crazy good like that, was for the SSTU radial decoupler, so it no longer dances around on me. Um, he had also noticed that issue and found a quick fix. Um, so I've just, you know, uh, tweaked my test craft a little bit. So I've thrown on the launch escape abort system. Uh, in this is in realism overhaul. But we just left. I left the um, what do you call them? The stocky fuels because adding turning them to real fuels wouldn't affect the function or mass really at all. So I just basically scaled it up a bit to the real size. Uh, and I'm using uh, so just to show it off the procedural upper stages. Uh, so that's a fixed one. Where is his procedural one? It's somewhere in here. Let's start you off again. Um, anyway, so he's Shadow Mage has two separate procedural upper stage fuel tanks. Uh, one where it looks separate like this, and one where they're kind of a combined uh, combined appearance tank. Uh, and I just wanted to you know quickly show it off because it can pretty much behave like uh, the kind of prefab configured ones we have for RO. So. This is you know, the separate tank one. Um, if you want to pause quickly, you can see how I have it configured, but mostly just tweaked it so it fits about the size of the, uh, the interim cryogenic. I threw an engine on it. Uh, you know, same engine, I think, is on the interim cryogenic. Let me poke it. Yeah, I think so. And yeah, it's got enough delta V to throw this to, you know, to the moon. Uh, and another cool thing I want to show off, because Shadow Mage says not enough people show it off. Um, it's, it says non-RO, but uh, I'm, I'll probably apply some tweaks, like the default size for this part is a little small. Let's see if I can find it in here. Mm, no, as usual, in the moment I just can't quite find it. Uh, anyway, it's, it's a part, it exists. Um, <clears throat> so it, it takes a little bit of experimenting, but it can decouple on the top or bottom. I didn't flip the part, it has an option in here to invert engine. So one thing I'll tweak for realism overhaul is notice I've d drastically decreased the thrust and solid fuel scaling because when you scale them up to realistic sizes for realism overhaul they're just too heavy and powerful, you know, more than they need. And there's note there's no uh, there's no decoupler between the two, just a decoupler above this one and you'll see that in flight. Uh, so one, you know, as you can see, so the engines are inverted. So this one will be pushing the, you know, the core stage back and this one will be alleging this forward while uh, we use it. So those are just some cool um, SSTU things. I highly suggest people try it out, whether they play in stock or realism overhaul or just RSS. Um, so let's see, in flight, <clears throat> uh, I found a fix to one of the, uh, probably the way I'll title this video, because it's the fix to kind of the biggest issue in the Pingo Pete release. Even he noticed it and it's like, you know, it doesn't quite have an idea. So I have a nice hacky fix to it. So it's when your was around 100 kilometers up, uh, what you end up seeing is this, everything kind of fades to white, uh, which is kind of crazy. Um, so it's during, so I did a little digging and kind of, you know, went with my intuition since I fiddled a bit with the S, uh, scaled space and PQS transition. That's between the mode as you see the Earth when you're kind of, you know, um, planetary and uh, satellite bodies when you're down near them, how it's uh, kind of determined and shaped versus how you're seeing it from out here. So you know, one of these is scaled space and one is PQS. Uh, so during the transition between the two, um, some setting of, of the EVE development version, or uh, maybe it's even something specific RVE does, I'm really not sure, but it causes that transition to just be terrible. Uh, just a moment here. There we go. All right, so we're just heading up into the sky. Um, so that transition, kind of every, all the textures fade to white, or some things might even disappear, uh, which I really <laughs> don't care for. Pingo doesn't care for. So I have a nice hackery fix, and I'll link to where I at, you know, where I posted that on the forum, uh, just so you can see it in text. But effectively, um, because that transition, like the idea is to smooth between rendering as PQS, rendering to scaled space, um, to kind of make a smooth transition between the two views, but you know certain things about uh, Eve and RVE and real solar system working together just doesn't make you know you, that that uh, goal is not achieved. It does not look good or smooth at all in that transition. So instead, I changed the PQS and scaled space values for real solar system in this instance to um, just eliminate that fade over because it does not add at all 
uh, to the visuals while you are uh, making the switch over. So let's just do throw a little time warp onto this. Probably pitching down a little bit more than I need to because that's kind of like a feedback loop. If you have it pitched down more, it will head down pretty drastically. So notice how the solid boosters just didn't dance around at all. So I have KJR, a Kerbal Joint Reinforcer. Uh, ooh, another quick thing I want to show off. Uh, I have a couple notes because I want to show off is, you know, kind of get as much value out of a single video as I can. So note how uh, post-processing. So this is what um, Scatterer is doing from here. If, if you don't, if you think this is too heavy-handed and how it kind of colors the atmosphere, you could switch it off um, this way and just save it or change the settings. Um, or you can mile it out, right? If you, you know, if you like one or the other or anywhere in between, uh, you can set it up yourself. So they stage off all nicely, toggle, post. So I like it. Uh, I definitely like the look of this. And boom, so right there you saw the transition. Um, notice that nothing faded to white, it didn't look all crazy and gross for a while, just boom, we were in uh, space. So uh, that is the trick. I <laughs> uh, just changed the PQS and scaled space fade overs, and like I said, I'll, I'll link to that in, um, in the video um, details. So another thing I want to show off, so something I notice, and some people may not like it, so I want to show them the options, is you can't make out Florida all that easily from this view. You, know, you might like that settled view like I do. I do find it just a tad subtle, so I just want to show off the difference. It's caused by the extinction effect that's kind of tinting things red and changing things up. So without the extinction effects, there you go. You see Florida with all the RVE beauty uh, put onto it and the rest of the continental United States out there. Uh, so, you know, you and again, just like that previous setting I was showing off of scatter. If, if you like the way I have it, you can just have it that way. If you don't like it at all, you can just turn it off or you can tweak uh, the settings to get anywhere in between. The, the key settings are extinction multiplier and extinction tint. So we'll show off a rando example there. That didn't seem to have much effect. I think it limits at about 300 or one of these two values does. Ooh. Uh, oh, maybe it's uh, load. It's because I'm not set to config point the, the max altitude. So, extinction rim fade? No, that's not what I want. I want the ex actual extinction uh, value here. So let's say 190. So there, see, I've made it way more red. If I went below 90, it'd be less red. It's kind of a subtle interplay. I'm not like a graphics uh, designy guy, so I don't know the details of how these are calculating back and forth. I think, see, that might have crashed it because it's too high. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, you can just, uh, so I load back to my own settings. So you can just tweak those to your own uh, heart's content uh, through the Alt F11 menu. And sorry, I didn't say it earlier, Alt E for um, Eve. Because I find those are sometimes so hard to find uh, just to dig up the controls. Like how do I open these secret voodoo menus that people, I see people pop up or people are using to customize their stuff while in game. So Alt E for that. Oh, notice I've got the two cloud layers again and Alt F11. So I feel like it actually might be playable, because even this, the memory manager here, I've seen it go way up, but not actually change colors. And there's different, you know, there's the video RAM memory and your, um, your game RAM memory. Uh, so the number could creep up, but if it doesn't change color, it might not actually be too bad. So I think I, I'm going to try to do some play with my settings as they are, without kind of parring anything or um, paring away or pruning anything more out. Uh, so I want to show off one last thing in this. Uh, well, maybe another thing. Looks like I'm doing good for time. Uh, so well, let me quick check, quickly check some other timer I've got here. Oh yeah, I've got some time. All right. So I'm going to show off the cool, cool S STU decouplers here um, for pushing your stage away. And I'm going to show off uh, kind of similar, what I did with the extinction stuff there, uh, except for Africa. So you can see specifically what it makes like another, because you know, the colors and stuff of the US are obviously substantially different from how they're rendered in RSS uh, than from Africa. So I figure that's a good comparison. Oh, and one thing, I, I don't know if I said it earlier, if, you know, I'm sorry if somebody has to watch all of my videos to get all of my tricks, but hey, you know, it's hard to condense them all down. So from this view, you know, map view, and for map view, um, I just shut off the engine, by the way. I didn't need the extra DV, and I'll stage in a moment. So Alt F11. So out here, um, I don't think it actually saves to the um, to scatter's config file. So if you download them or get them from somewhere else, so this comes as like something small, crazy, and that's why in this view you'll see the little dinky. You know, you won't see. Uh, you, you know, you'll see the little ball at the middle. 
uh, in real solar system. And it's really easy to change. It's just, I, I, did, I did this through trial and error, just numbers, a number vaguely like that. So if I go bigger, it's bigger. I just kind of load. I just kind of came up with that number myself through trial and error. You know, you could, if you want it to look like it's a little more skid of atmosphere, you can totally do that. Just, you know, what is it? Uh, 10650, that's the number I go with. All right, so we're just coasting here um, in orbit because the payload isn't very heavy. So watch the stage. So this will be the, uh, the oh, I'll shut these off because I want to have the engine uh, throttled up and you might see in a moment. So it'll turn on that upper stage engine so it'll start you know, um, extending and we will get, uh, both of these will fire off. So ready, here we go. So there we go. So that guy, uh, first stage or core stage, uh, fires itself away and then this ullages and you know enough to settle the fuels because that is definitely a requirement in realism overhaul and, and then once again to just drop that off and I just really like the way you can get that to work in SSTU it's not hyper simple like I've seen it in some other mods but considering how much other stuff that uh, SSTU makes just trivially easy I'm, I'm willing to do that make that a little more difficult so jettison side panels Again, I need to set that down to three, but just one of those crazy detailed things I haven't gotten around to. Another thing I want to configure in Realism Overhaul uh, for SSTU is, here, I can kill the engine now anyway. There we go. Uh, is So you can see these little RCS clusters around here, and that's also part of this procedural upper stage in SSTU. I just haven't configured it for real fuels yet. I basically just need to add hydrazine or some basic um, hypergolic fuel to this that doesn't change with the scaling and set up these little uh, thrusters to burn it. And then that will allow you to kind of change your the orientation of your craft using just this uh, you know, lower stage um, fuel. So without wasting it from something up, up here using the RCS of that, those guys to get your position or ullage. Because you can see there are a couple of little jets on it that will push forward, which will be able to settle the fuel. You know, so it's just perfectly set up for realism overhaul. Just I love the way he does that. So let's push out the, which one of these, yeah, extend panels. Is it my imagination or does, do his um, animations actually go fast when you're, when you're uh, time accelerated? Um, not sure if that's a standard thing now or um, maybe it's just because I was in, you know, 4x time warp, not 10. So here's our Africa and I just wanted you to be able to see, again, what's the difference that extinction makes. So that's you know, Africa without that feature on. And I suppose I could show it out here too. So I don't know, I just really like that red tinge. I'm not precisely sure. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how realistic it is, but it's a visuals mod, right? I set it to how I want it to look. So um, so you can have it the way, you know, the way I like it. You can have it just completely off if you don't like that, um, or anywhere in between by tweaking, um, by making sure you've gone up to config point the max um, and changing extinction tilt, tilt uh, tint and extinction multiplier and then saving so you can change those in game you can use you know load i haven't fiddled with a backup but once you've made changes in game just save and that, those will be the permanent settings and if you want to be more careful or kind of fiddle between a couple of them you could note down these numbers or copy or config outside a game or you know make a more liberal use of these than i do um, post-processing doesn't seem to do anything in space here is the uh, realize that we're actually all just in the matrix. Um, yeah, so I'm glad I could show off all those features in a relatively short video. Um, you know, I'll post a link again because the, the big the, the big gain I feel like I made from yesterday was just eliminating that scale space to PQS transition about about 100 kilometers up. Um, because then instead of it fading and looking crazy, you just pop between the two different uh, visuals. They actually look fairly similar to me. So I don't mind just that one glaring, you know, half a second changeover because before the changeover, I love the way it looks. After the changeover, I love the way it looks and no ugly transition. Uh, so thanks for watching. Have a good day.